Peter Lynch, a legendary figure in the world of investing. He's here to share some key insights and lessons from his successful career in the stock market. And what do you do if this thing goes from 12 to 9? Do you, you buy more? Do you walk around the block? I mean, do you call your friends? I mean, what the hell do you do with something like that? People buy this stuff. Now, if you own a piece of shit like that, you will never make money. Never. These are the key points that I, I've been using for 25 years. I think they're true then. I think they're true today. I think they'll be true in 25 years. And I think that's what successful investing is all about. And uh, the first point is know what you own. I can't believe how many people own stocks. They couldn't describe to an 11-year-old in two minutes or less why they own this thing or what it is. The only, if you actually pin them down and you put a whip to them, they'd say the sucker's going up. That's the only reason they have for you. And this is the kind of this is the normal kind of company that people buy. It's a, a very simple story. I own a lot of companies like this. They make a relatively mundane product. It's a one megabit SRAM CMOS bipolar risk floating point data IO array processor with optimizing compiler, 16-bit dual port memory, Unix operating system, four wet stone mega flop polysilicon emitter with a high bandwidth, that's important. Six gigahertz double metallization communication protocol, asynchronous backward compatibility, peripheral bus architecture, four wave interleave memory, token ring interchange of a backplane, and they do it in 15 nanoseconds of capability. Now, if you want a piece of shit like that, <laughs> you will never make money, never. Somebody come with more wet stones, less wet stones, big mega flop. And what do you do if this thing goes from 12 to nine? Do you, you buy more, do you walk around the block? I mean, do you call your friends? I mean, what the hell do you do with something like that? People buy this stuff. I mean, I buy stuff like Dunkin' Donuts and uh, Stop and Shop and CVS and made money in all those and no one looked at it. So that's the kind of stocks I like to buy. But I'm telling you, people don't do this. And I'm talking sophisticated people, unsophisticated people. They don't know what the company is, what's the story. And it's very important to know it because it doesn't always work and uh, you have to keep posted. Now, here's a big point. Remember this one. It's futile to predict the economy, interest rates, and stock market. I mean, people keep trying to do this. I mean, this would be useful. I would love to know when we have a recession. I'd love to know when interest rates are going to go up or down. I'd love to know when the stock market's going up. That would be helpful. I would like to get next year's Wall Street Journal. Unfortunately, you don't get it. Peter Lynch emphasizes several key points about successful investing in this passage. He highlights the importance of knowing what you own in your investment portfolio and cautions against buying stocks without understanding the underlying companies. He also mentions the futility of trying to predict economic trends, interest rates, and stock market movements. Lynch prefers investing in companies with simple, understandable stories like Dunkin' Donuts and Stop and Shop rather than complex technical companies. Overall, his advice focuses on the importance of informed and long-term investing strategies. I remember in 1982, we had 20% uh, prime rate, 15% long governments, double-digit unemployment, double-digit inflation. I don't remember anybody telling me about that in 1980. I remember anybody telling me about that in 1981. But in 83, I remember they said, well, the economy's bounced back, we had a recession in 85. In 85, they said we had a recession in 86. They said for sure we have a recession in 88. They said 89, for sure we'll have a recession. And then 90, we're supposed to have the so-called soft landing which we never had. So I've always said, if you spend 13 minutes a year on economics, you've wasted 10 minutes. All you need to know about the stock market is it goes up and it goes down, and it goes down a lot. And that's all you need to know. Again, it'd be terrific to know what's gonna happen to the economy, but I deal with facts. If inventories are going up, if copper prices are going down, if room occupancy is going the wrong way, people building too many hotels, I look at freight car loadings, my own railroad stocks. I deal with facts. I don't deal with people tell me something's gonna happen in the future. You might as well call the psychic hotline for that So you got plenty of time. This is true of Sally Mae, this is true of Dunkin' Donuts, this is true of Stop and Shop. People are so insistent, I'm that way too. I have to fight it. They have to buy a stock, let's say, let's say, let's see, it's now 501. I haven't found a stock yet today. You know, I gotta find a stock before sunset. You know, if the, you could buy Walmart 10 years after Walmart went public. Let's say you're a very careful investor. You waited. You said, I don't know if this company can make it. You waited for Walmart to roll it out. You could buy Walmart 10 years after they went public and made 30 times your money. 30 times your money. 10 years after they went public, they're only in 15% of the United States. 1.5. They hadn't saturated the 1.5. You could say, well, why can't they go to 17? Why can't they go to 19? I mean, why don't I take a leap of faith here? Why can't they go to 26? All they did for the next three decades was roll it out. You could buy Walmart. If the day they went public, you bought it, you would have made 500 times your money. You waited 10 years in Walmart, you made 30 times your money. You got plenty of time in this business. Uh, here's a good one. It's gone down this much already, you can't go any lower. I remember when Polaroid went from 140 to about 107, people said, if you ever get Polaroid under 100, you gotta buy it. You just back up the truck, buy the stock. Come the stock could get to 110, then rally, you know, fall 103, you go 112, go 105. He said, gets under 100, buy Polaroid. Polaroid broke 100, people started buying it, and within nine months, the stock was 18. I saw the same thing with Avon products. So just saying it's gone down this far, you know, 
how much lower? I mean, it's crazy, but you know, it can keep going. In fact, I tried this out. Kaiser Industries, I was a new analyst at Fidelity, and we were about to buy the biggest block ever of Kaiser Industries. The stock had gone from 29 to 17. We're about to buy the largest block ever in the history of the American Stock Exchange. We bought know, 10 or 15 million shares. At 15 and three quarters, I said, my God, the stock's gone from 29 to 17. How much lower can it go? We bought this enormous block at 15 and three quarters. So I called my mother and I said, Mom, I guess stock of Kaiser Industries, it's 10. So about three months later, I said, you gotta buy this. It's gone from 29 to 10. How much lower can it go? Well, it went to nine, it went to eight, it went to seven, it went to six, it went to five, it went to four. Now, fortunately, this happened very rapidly, or I'd be working at the stop and shop uh, bag and behind the line uh, instead of Fidelity. So fortunately, this was compressed in only about six months. So I had to go to the fund manager and say, I was a little bit early on this at 15 and three quarters. It, uh, we call this premature in the business. The uh, uh, had a correction, which you know is a euphemism for losing a lot of money rapidly. So I said, let's check this again. The stock's four. They own 45% of Kaiser Aluminum. They own 59% of Kaiser Steel. They own 38% of Kaiser Cement. They own all of Kaiser Electronics, all of Kaiser Broadcasting, which had seven TV sets. They own Jeep. They had Kaiser Fiberglass. I said about Kaiser Santa Gravel. They had a bunch of other Kaisers, and they had no debt. Now, in this room, because I know Freeman Billings is very interested in financial stocks, no one's ever gone bankrupt without any debt. I think you have to give some kind of distinguished service award to somebody who did that. <laughs> but they had no debt. I said, it's not going to go to zero. You know, I was wrong when I said it can't go below 15. So we hung on. And within three years, they gave out the shares in Kaiser Steel, gave out the shares in Kaiser Cement, gave out the shares in Kaiser Steel and Aluminum. And they sold off all the businesses. You got about $55 a share. But if you didn't know the story, and the stock went from 15 to 11, and you're just saying, how much lower can it go? When it went to nine, went to eight, you'd, you would have gone. So you can't just say it can't go any lower. Because I saw Taco Bell go from 14 to one in 1974, and they had no debt and making 60 cents a share. There's a corollary to that that's even more dangerous. If it's gone this high already, how can it possibly go lower? Uh, higher, sorry. That. Philip Morris, adjusted for splits, sold for 12 cents in 1951. Then it goes to 60 cents in 1961. It goes up fivefold, and you say to yourself, how much higher can this go? It's gone up fivefold. They missed the power of Marlboro. They missed the, there's 220 countries in the world. They missed the cash flow of the company. They missed everything. This stock was a hundred bagger after going up fivefold. But people sold it just saying, how much higher can it go? It can't go any higher. They did the same at Home Depot. They did the same at Toys R Us. I did the same thing at Toys R Us. Just saying it can't go any higher. It's gone this much already. That's very dangerous. And don't, don't use that one. It's a very bad thing to do. If you enjoyed this content, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified of future videos just like this one. To continue learning about investing, watch this video right here. In conclusion, Peter Lynch reminds us to be cautious about common misconceptions when it comes to investing. His stories about stocks going lower or higher than expected emphasize the importance of thorough research and avoiding knee-jerk reactions. Keep these lessons in mind as you navigate the world of finance.